mention that I've actually got a link to the project file for this video in the description. So if you find this a little bit too confusing or you're struggling to follow, you can just get the project file and it will, might help you understand it a little bit better. There's a link in the description and probably in the pinned comment as well. You can also pick up my preset packs for Premiere Pro and After Effects if you want some presets for like kills and stuff for your highlights videos. But yeah, hope you enjoy the video. Going harder than ever, I'm grinding, I'm flying, I'm speeding like I hit the booth. I just sky when I smoke on that big gas, got a jetpack. All right, this is a, a fairly complicated transition I'm gonna show you right now. It's uh, I've seen it quite a few times in a lot of montages these days, and I thought it'd be interesting to do a video on it. I've actually had someone who commented on the other video I did that regards this some um, sort of like screen zoom in thing, and they said, can you do it as a transition? And I thought, yeah, why not? Because I've seen it quite a lot. But yeah, I'm gonna show you how to do it as a transition instead of that like, sort of screen thing. So the first thing that you wanna do is you obviously wanna um, make the screen zoom out. So to do that, I'm gonna go to the bit that I want it to start zooming out, just here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the effect controls up in the top left. So make sure you're on effects and then effect controls top left. And you're gonna press a keyframe on the scale right here. Just wherever you want the clip to start going out, make sure you still have space afterwards. And then I'm gonna go a couple of keyframes ahead you're going to want to change this uh, about, There's you're not going to get it right first time. And then I'm going to lower the scale to about 50%, just like this. Actually, I might go to 60%. You want to play around with it. And then what you're going to do, you've got to make sure that it's keyframed as well. So remember to hit this uh, stopwatch the first time you do it. So the keyframe should look like this right now. Just like that. You see right there. So that's what we want it to do. I think I want it to be closer together. Like I said, we're going to be changing it up a lot because... Um, because there's no way you're going to get the keyframes right the first time. So yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's the right speed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to shift click on both the keyframes up here in the top left. And we're going to right click. And we're going to click continuous bezier. Then we're going to just click on one of them. Then we're just going to come over to next to the scale over here. Click down this drop down. And we're going to see this right here. What we want to do is we want to zoom in a bit. And we want to bring this line over here and straighten it so the blue line is straight and it's like roughly in the middle we want it to the end of it to be in between both the uh, beziers we want to do the same for the next line we want to bring it so it's closer to the middle just like this but we want to still have a little curve here so this is what mine looks like right now if you want to make sure so yeah okay i think that looks nice i like the keyframe there okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the second clip below it and we're going to have this transition out so first we're going to make, make it transition out just because I think it's best to finish the first clip before you put the second clip below it. So to do that, we're going to come to about here. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to go a few frames ahead of the last keyframe. So you see the last keyframe here that makes it go to 60% scale. I'm going to go a few, few keyframes ahead. I'm going to bring this back up again. And then I'm going to press a little keyframe over here onto the position. So just click the toggle animation button and then go a few frames ahead, probably roughly the same as the scale, I think. And then increase the uh, first one here. So increase the first one like this to bring it off to the right. Make sure it goes all the way off the screen, just like that. And then we wanna do the same thing as we did with this, roughly. But I'm gonna show you how to change it up a little bit. We just wanna click on both of them, right click, and then temporal interpolation and continuous bezier, just like that. Then we wanna um, come into the little drop down here for position instead, and we wanna change these up. What we're gonna do now instead is we're gonna only use, only change the first one. We're gonna take this first little line we're going to bring it all the way down to the bottom line and we're going to drag this out like that. And then we're going to take the second line, we're going to drag it this way and we're going to bring it down to the bottom as well. So now it looks now it will look a little bit different to the scale like in terms of the way it's eased and I'll show you what this looks like. Just like that. So it um so it sort of eases itself out and then slowly picks up pace just like slow and then it picks up pace towards the end. So now what we want to do is you want to add the clip below it so that uh, the transition is a bit smoother. I'm going to actually increase the size of this clip. But now what we're going to do is we're going to find out where the transition starts by using our arrow keys to find out where the first frame sort of uh, goes along. So I think it's this one right here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pick the first clip, just, just the top of it. We're going to drag it up like this so there's a hole beneath it. And we're going to drag the audio for the second clip below it. It's up to you uh, if you have audio and stuff. Uh, and we're just going to drag this clip underneath it so that it starts... There you go, just like that, so that it starts in the perfect point, just like that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fade the audio so that it doesn't sound too messy. Uh, my first clip doesn't have audio on it. I don't know why it's uh, glitched out a bit, but just pretend it does. I'm going to fade it just like this. You're going to come to the end of the audio clip, uh, bring it in probably halfway. You want to start these probably like this, I reckon, halfway in or something. Just like that, I reckon. And then you want to right-click on the end of the first audio clip, click Apply Default Transition, and just drag it to the start of the second clip. 
and then I'm going to come to the start of the uh, second audio clip, right click, apply default transitions and then drag it to that where this finally comes off, just like that. It should look like this. Just like that. Obviously uh, you'll have a song beneath it. I don't know, actually know if my desktop audio is recording, I've got a little bit of a glitch right now. But you'll be able to, um, you'll be able to figure out what it sounds like and you can play around with uh, how long you want it to take for the audio to ease in. So that's basically what you have to do. I can't actually record my desktop sound right now, I've got a little bit of um, a problem going on. But in the um, final thing that I probably showed at the start already, there'll be sound so you should be alright. Now what we want to do is you want to add the um, uh, sort of darkness around the edge of this. So to do that, what you want to do is you want to come to the top clip, you want to go into your effects and you want to search BCC vignette. For this effect you actually do need BCC which is a little bit annoying but um, there's a link in the description to BCC if you want to get it. It is a paid plugin but I'm just going to drag BCC vignette onto the top clip just like this. Only the top clip. Okay so now you dragged a BCC vignette on what you want to do is you want to copy all the settings that I've got here just copy them exactly for what they are. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. Okay so now you've done that you want to keyframe the vignette color opacity. I'm going to go to the very start of where this starts moving I'm going to have the opacity as zero, so click the toggle animation button and make sure this is zero. Then I'm going to go, I might actually go five frames ahead so that it's sort of a little bit more eased. And then I'm going to increase the color opacity to 80%. And then we're just going to leave it like that for the whole thing while it slides off just like that. So now we've done this, what I actually want to do is I want to blur the background so it looks a little bit nicer because I think uh, it's a little bit too contrasty at the moment. I want the background to be slightly blurred and then it will unblur itself uh, as this moves off. So as this moves off, it will blur itself. I'm actually going to decrease this so that you know where it ends. So now what we're going to do is we're going to grab Gaussian Blur, which you don't need actually a plugin for Gaussian Blur. We're going to grab it from Blur and Sharpen. We're going to drag it onto the clip. We're going to come to um, where this starts moving out. So where this is just about to move out. So I'm going to go to about here. A few frames before this is about to move out. We're going to come over to the effect controls. Remember, make sure Gaussian Blur is on the bottom clip, not the top clip. We want it to be on the second clip. Uh, you're going to tick repeat edge pixels, you're going to put a keyframe on blurriness and change it to 25 or it's up to you actually, really up to you what you want to do. I'm going to do 25 but it's up to you. And then what you want to do is you want to come towards where this comes off the screen and then you just want to change the blurriness back to zero again. And then after all of that, this is what it should look like. I'm going harder than ever, I'm grinding, I'm flying, I'm speeding like I hit the booth. I just sky when I smoke on that big gas, got a jetpack on Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to, you can uh, pick up my After Effects and Premiere Pro preset packs. The links will be in the description for that. I don't have this effect in it, but I have loads of other presets, uh, including a lot of the ones that I use uh, in my montages whenever I um, actually make them. If you do want this effect, though, I'll leave a link in the description to the project file. You can also follow my Twitter and my Twitch. I stream every now and then on Twitch, and I'm active on Twitter quite a bit, so you can follow me there. But yeah, I'll see you in the next one.